There are some clients, depending upon where their digital maturity are and wh what kind of human resources they have, where we've got to do the bulk of the work. We have to provide engineers to do the bulk of the work in the first couple of phases. Um, Tom, let me tell you. So one of the things that you talked about that we talked about was the importance of assessment up front right capability assessment gap analysis up front before you ever break ground and the importance of having a strategy will you talk about that for trello board because this is something i preach absolutely. over and over right absolutely so, you, so, yep. so when i when i started on this so as you read in my background i've worn many different hats over the years so <laughs> you know i've i've got a different perspective on these types of topics than others um, so when I came into the industry 4.0 topic, started looking at the manufacturing side of things to see how we were going to do this. The first thing I noticed right away is that we had a huge discrepancy between what my sites were telling me they were capable of and what I actually knew they were capable of, right? You know, from a technology standpoint, I'm like, you guys are nowhere near that level. Their processes, yes, absolutely. Very much nailed in. They've been doing it that same way for years, but mm. their technology to drive that absolutely non-existent or very, very low. So the first thing that we did is we actually hired an external company to come in and do an industry 4.0 gap analysis for us, which I, I know there's something that, that you guys are involved with as well. We, yep. we had them come in and we, we evaluated all our, our sites and, and we wanted to do it that way for two reasons. One is I was coming from IT and that's a very nasty four letter word in a lot of organizations. So <laughs> I, you know, I never wanted to be seen as the guy that telling people what to do. That's not me. That's not what we needed to do because it instantly would have set everybody off. The other thing was that I had partnered up with manufacturing excellence in our organization because I knew they were the partner to kind of help me form and shape and kind of chase people. And they themselves didn't really know the answers to a lot of the questions and they had a lot of curiosity. So we partnered together and said, look, let's just draw a bench line. Let's just see where we are and let's get a good understanding. And of course, the results were exactly what we what I kind of thought based off of the, the quick analysis I had done is we had this huge gap. And, and once we showed that to everybody in an independent way, everybody got it. They're like, OK, yeah, we get it. Our processes are here, but our technology needs to do this to get up to this level where we can do something. Did they understand that they didn't know what they didn't know a after yeah. that assessment? They understood. I we don't know what we don't know. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And then, then we also, through that, we, we had a kind of a parallel thing going on as well, is that, you know, based off some of the outcomes of the, the survey, we went into a few kind of lighthouse sites to do just an analysis of what is going to be the best bang for our buck. Where should we focus our industry 4.0 journey? Like you said, you know, you could, somebody asked me, what do I need to do? And you go, I don't know. Um, but the, the big thing is, is for us was that we started focusing right away on OEE based off the outcomes of that. And it, it has been, I mean, it's like an instant bang for your buck opportunity right. for our organization to chase. And that's where we started. And that's where we've kind of progressed to at this point. How did you pick your lighthouse sites? Um, honestly, they were just two sites that were, were standing on the shoulders of a few others. So they were. They were easy for us to pick because we knew that if they had it here, they were at like several other sites, right? So we, we knew that they were kind of the lead examples of other sites where we'd have a good example of them. Um, and, and I just have to say, just a, a, just taking a step back, I, everything that I'm talking about, I don't want people to go, oh my God, that guy's just done all that. I'm standing on the shoulders of a lot of other people, folks. I, I just happen to be the guy sitting in front of you talking about it. Um, but there's a lot of partnerships and a lot of people in my organization that I work with to make all this happen. So it's not, it's never a one man show and, and that's never should be seen either. Moreover, it's never just your vendor show. Like you, no, God, wanna, no. you guys own this, right? <laughs> no, Tr yeah, Tr yeah. We, we're in full and agree. And just like the other gentlemen on the panel, they, they, they work for the end user. Like this is the thing that we stress over and over and over again. The idea that the, the, the model that the system integrator or the integrator or the consultant is going to own the outcome is that is a dated, that is an old model. Yep. The, the integrator, the consultant is coming in for two reasons. Number one, they're coming in because they have domain expertise that maybe the team doesn't have yet. And you're going to teach them domain expertise moral. Mm -hmm. and, and in the beginning, you may be doing a lot of the actual development work, the conversion of data into information. The integrator, the consultant might be doing that in the first phase while you're onboarding the client. Or we have had many clients where the only thing that we had to do was the assessment. Literally from day one, from breaking ground, the client was doing 100% of the work and we're just advising. 
Okay. There are some clients, depending upon where their digital maturity are and wh what kind of human resources they have, where we've got to do the bulk of the work. We have to provide engineers to do the bulk of the work in the first couple of phases. But one of the things that stood out to me and the reason I wanted you on here, you said you, there was something you said during the panel that stood out and you said, I'm paraphrasing here. You said, but everyone knows how Tom can be. You talked about yourself in the third person. You said, and it was basically, you know, you, how you hold people accountable. You will challenge the status quo. You will, you know, Tom, Tom is the guy. You're not going to be able to pull the wool over Tom's eyes, however you framed it. But you were yeah. basically, and that, and we, we refer that, we refer to that as transformative and disruptive leadership, which is an important component of a successful digital transformation initiative, right? Yeah. So let me ask you this, Tom. You're obviously a type A, right? You're <laughs> obviously, you have strong opinions. You're clear, clearly diplomatic as well, but you're a strong type A. In a large organization, Everybody, our, our audience is gonna wanna know, how do you overcome the friction? So when you run into say a political hurdle or how does a person like yourself who's in this role overcome the friction? Well, how do you how do you focus on overcoming that? It's simple. I prove it. I don't okay. just talk about it. I walk the walk as well. So, you know, it's not just enough for us to sit there and say, you need to do this. You need to do this. We need to show them why you need to do this. So, you know, a big part of what always is in the back of my head is I have to tell people what's in it for me. You know, it's you got to answer that. Otherwise, they're never going to be reciprocal about it. And it's really interesting because we've had those sites, you know, we've had a lot of friction with a lot of sites that say, oh, yeah, we can do it better. We'll do it our own way. Bah, 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 bah. And, you know, they have come full, you know, 180 back to us and said, you know what, you guys are on it. You know, this is this is the way we want to go, because we've been able to demonstrate the value much clearer to the business. And it drives the investment so much easier for the businesses once they've got that picture. So, you know, when we first started, there was a lot of justifications for CapEx and investments and things that are necessary to make this stuff go. And now the CapExes are practically writing themselves because of the cost savings that are coming out of it, right? You know, so there's no question anymore about what do we need? It's just more of how quick can we get the, the services lined up and which, how many more sites can we do based off the number of staff that we have, right? You know, it's not, it's not this big, big hurdle anymore, but it wasn't easy. I mean, it's, it takes a lot of convincing. It takes a lot of work. There's a lot of just, you have to put it into place and show people here's the value of it um, and, sh and prove it back to them time and again. So that's how do you, when I, how do you, you talked about the CapEx piece and I don't, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but how do you, how do you handle the, I've seen lots of examples of different distributions of CapEx expenditure, say a third of the CapEx is coming from the business unit. A third is coming from the, the parent company and a third is coming from the site. How, what, can you, quickly go into how much are the sites since you work for the business right mm -hmm. you work for the business how at, at at what what level of commitment financial commitment is the site having to take on in order are they taking on the bulk of it and so you're having to sell you're having to sell the full kit and caboodle like they have to be convinced that yep. this is valuable to our okay yep. Talk, talk about that since they're they're picking up the bill the site's picking up the bill they're basically hiring you from the business to do this. Yep. What are the what are the two or three areas that you're primarily focused on in in, in order in order to sell the value of digital? Right. So to um, them, to them the, the the things that we're focused on are OEE. I mean that's that's clear number one. That's the where we start as far as the the end result where they're going to go. We say look, you know, if you implement this and we've got a model that we say, you know, if you're turnover at your site is X amount, you can save approximately X amount based off of the, the outcomes we've seen at other sites. So we've got a ratio and it's pretty, it holds true. I mean, we've been pretty impressed by that ourselves. Uh, and the other one is energy savings. Now, the thing for that is that I can achieve both outcomes with the same investment for the site, right? You know, so I'm only having to ask for one big lift from an infrastructure side, uh, but I always point out to them, look, I'm putting in plumbing in your facility. This is not sexy. Right. This is not pretty. This is nothing that's gonna it's gonna get you anything once I do it, other than once we turn the tools on and turn the lights on, then we go, right? But in, tor in order to do that, we gotta do all this other stuff first because you haven't spent anything on network cabling in you know 15 years. Guess what? I can't use it. I gotta get something else in there. And it's not pretty, it's not sexy, it's just a sunk cost. But once we get there, it's all paid for once we turn the lights on and go. 